Hi, I'm Nikki Anderson, the President and CEO of the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to our new edition of Inside the Chamber. Today, we'll be featuring a panel of experts to discuss minimum wage. Should we raise it or keep it where it is? The debate continues and we've got a great panel to discuss the topic. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today we're going to be discussing minimum wage, and we have a great panel to discuss this hot topic. So I'd like to welcome first Ron Bayman. He's the Assistant Professor of Economics at Benedictine University. Welcome, Ron. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Chris Hartner of Naperville Running Company here in Naperville. Welcome, Chris. I'd like to welcome, welcome Bill Anderson, owner of Oswald's Pharmacy. Welcome. And I'd like to welcome Adam Russo, the Chairman and CEO of Edgewood Clinical Services. Welcome, Adam. Hi. Thank you. Um, so to kick off the conversation, um, you know, we've, we've read so much about minimum wage, the pros and the cons, how it would help, how it might not be able to help. Um, so Ron, I'd like to start with you. Just some general thoughts on minimum wage um, and kind of your, your thoughts on it. Well, I, uh, I believe the minimum wage should be increased. I, 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 my, my biggest issue is how to, how to help the economy and, and, of course, also how to help people who, who have uh, less income. Uh, but uh, uh, without raising the wage, I don't see how we can actually have economic prosperity. We really need to raise the wage uh, to get where we want to go as a society, I believe. Okay, great. Adam? My thought is I, I do think that uh, something needs, it needs to be addressed in, in some way, shape, or form. I think the, the hard part is, is that um, it, it, the discussion always seems to be about kind of one segment of it. Um, I, I'd like to also see some consideration into um, you know, how, how, to, how to address the other ends versus taxes with businesses and how, and, and how healthcare is affecting businesses. All these things kind of come together. When we focus on one specific part of the segment, uh, it's, it's hard for businesses to manage all these multiple things and variables at once. So as much as I think something should, be, should happen with it, I do think we have to look at it more in a, in a broader context and not just uh, specifically around the, the wage. Great. Chris? Well, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big proponent of, of raising the minimum wage. And I, I kind of see it as, you know, if there's an adult working um, 40 hours a week, they should probably be paid enough to live in the community that they live in. Mm -hmm. And sort of that's my foundation on my, my belief on that. Cool. Bill? I'm somewhat ambivalent on the minimum wage. I think that any time the government dictates anything, I have an issue with it. And I look at, you look at the United States of America, there are, there are minimum wages all over the place. And they've got like a training wage and a this wage and a that wage. To just come up flat out and say, we're going to have a minimum wage of $12, $15, $16, $16 it seems crazy to me. Okay, so that brings up a really good point, and that is, so I know for um, for a couple of your businesses, you know, you have kids that come in. This is kind of their their entry into the job force. Um, so my question would be, when you think about a 16-year-old versus a 34-year-old single mom or single dad that has to support a family, um, how does that discussion look then um, about minimum wage, Adam? I think, um, well, and that's and that's the piece, right, of, of, the, of the whole systemic piece of things, because I think businesses should be able to decide what, you know, what, what is that wage worth to them? Um, and then if, it, to me, it seems like it, for a 16-year-old who's trying to gain experience, um, you don't make a lot of money, and that, you know, nor do I think you should. I think, you know, there's a paying your dues piece, and I think societally, um, we've we've lost that. I think we've become much more of an instant gratification culture, and um, we talk about it with, you know, um, you know, the younger population more and more uh, that things are just, a, you know, everyone wants to get from A to B, but no one wants to draw the line, you know, to connect them. So, I think um, I, I think businesses need to have a say over how much they pay, what the value is in doing it, why they're doing it, and I also think that there should be some tax incentives to 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 hire younger people to get them in the workforce and to do all these things and look at it on that on that more well-rounded plane. Okay, how about you, Chris? Yeah, I think the challenge is that, and I could see, uh, you know, for maybe a younger employee that's gaining experience, uh, you know, having a some kind of gradation to pay. Uh, but the the thing I think a lot of people assume minimum wage is young people, so that's okay. But um, if I remember the statistics correctly, I think almost 80 percent of people making minimum wage or thereabouts, 80 percent of those people are above age 20. Hmm. Something like that. Okay. Three, three fourths are at least twenty years old. Yeah, so seventy-five percent are and working full time, meaning family in thirty thousand, and eighty-nine percent of those. And then there's other estimates, but somewhere around eighty percent are, are not 
uh, teenagers. Right. And, uh, and, and so I, I think know. I think there's just kind of there's sort of a somewhat of a misperception that um, it it shouldn't you should be able to just you know work your way up. But I, I think if 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 you work at McDonald's mm -hmm. say and and they say well you know what you need to you work your way up you start at minimum wage and then you, your goal should be to be the manager there someday and like there's one manager and maybe two assistant managers and 80 mm -hmm. other employees and if 75 percent of those other 80 employees are 20 or older they that's not realistic mm -hmm. they, they can't they aren't going to be the manager but they have a tough job and they work hard and if the place you know the businesses are run well I believe there's a way to get a more fair pay. So there's the saying life isn't fair right um, so what do you say if you have someone who has a business and say look you know 80% of my business is young kids and I my full-time staff is, is significantly lower and I it would really you know be difficult for me to, to pay them minimum wage what are your thoughts on well, that? First of all, I, I think I think there's a misconception that I, I actually blame my, my economics colleagues for this <laughs> to a large extent, that that markets are somehow efficient, that they're fair, that they that they have some normative value, uh, and that's just not true. Markets are constructed by society. Uh, so in Denmark, uh, a fast food worker at McDonald's makes twenty dollars an hour, and gets you know five weeks vacation, or I don't remember exactly, but. Uh, pension, all these benefits that uh, would be unheard of here. They sound like utopia here. Um, how do they do that? They have pressure from below. They have very strong unions that force those wages up. Uh, I really believe that, and, and I, I agree with uh, my, my friend over here, I'm Chris. Chris, that um, uh, you know people should not be asked to work uh, at a wage that, that they can't support themselves and their family. That's just, that's just not right. Uh, and so if a business cannot pay a wage, if it's unable to pay a wage that can support a family, then uh, it's probably not a viable business. Okay. Uh, you're just not paying the real costs of running that business. Okay. And how might you respond to that? Well, I look at um, in the pharmacy industry, it's probably 70% of my income is capitated. It's I am told how much I'm going to be compensated for my services. And so if I'm McDonald's, a dime more on a cheeseburger gives me, makes up, makes up the difference of what mm -hmm. I had to pay the, uh, the minimum wage. I'm kind of stuck. 70% of what I take in is, is and it's, it, they never increase that. It gets smaller every year. This past year, I took a 17% decrease in, in pharmacy pricing through Obamacare or, or uh, Med D and insurance companies just downward pressure. And you, and this is all pharmacies, Walgreens, they're all the pressure to reduce that price. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the government, so the government or insurance company, companies are dictating your income. And then they're also saying, oh, you need to pay people more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a, there's a yeah. disparity there. I mean, just does, the math doesn't work. And again, when the government gets, involved in so many parts of business, it, it makes it difficult sometimes to survive. Mm -hmm. awesome. and, and I chime in with, you know, and I would say that when you look at manufacturing, in particular about all those jobs, you know, everything's going overseas. Well, a lot of those people who would work in, in plants with a union backing, with all these extra benefits, those options aren't there anymore. So now we're looking at turning jobs that were supposed to be, I think, high turnover jobs into permanent jobs. Yep, and, and I think that kind of goes a little bit more. We're, we're going to continue this conversation. Okay. Right now we're going to take a break, and I want you to think about what are your thoughts on minimum wage. We'll be right back. You can expect the same experience when you go to Fogo de Chão in Brazil. And what's exciting about that is it's a different dining experience. The food that is served in a Brazilian steakhouse is very familiar to Americans. It's 20 cuts of beef, lamb, pork, chicken, seafood with an incredible market table with great salads and vegetables. We've got our Brazilian gauchos here. You know, bringing a taste of the south of Brazil to Naperville. Anybody that comes to Fogo should come with an appetite, 
a smile on their face, and get ready for a great time. Welcome back to Inside the Chamber, and we're talking about minimum wage today. Uh, so we're having a really great conversation about the various levels of minimum wage, that it's not a really simple um, discussion. It's not higher or lower, and that's it. There are many, you know, variables that go into it. So we were talking about the fact that, you know, you are, the reimbursement that you get from the state has continued to, to go down, yet you're going to be asked to pay your employees more. So... And yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I wanted to comment on that. I, I, I agree with uh, uh, what my, my, my friends here are saying, that the, uh, the, 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 some certain businesses are constrained, uh, either by through government uh, payment l limits, caps, or other kinds of caps. And, and there are broader issues or, or, or trade issues where they're competing against companies that, that maybe pay even lower wages. And uh, So, yes, it has to be seen in a broader context. And I would just point out that, you know, some of the countries where wages are much higher uh, have much more extensive, uh, generous government funding for, for health care programs and other social service programs. And, uh, and also... Uh, uh, they are able to uh, to maintain very competitive industries, very productive industries. I have data here. You know, Norway has $64 an hour average. Germany, $47 an hour. These are export powerhouses. So that again, there's this myth that you need to have low wages to, to be able to compete in the world market. That's not really the way we want to go. We want to go with high productivity, quality jobs, and high wages because, as I said before, low wages is just a dead end. Mm -hmm. It doesn't lead to prosperity. It leads the other direction. We've had that since 1973. Hourly wages have been going down in the U.S. That's, that's a, a sign of economic decline that, needs to be, that we need to reverse. So you were talking about in your industry, it's 100% of, of you know, your reimbursement is dictated by, mm -hmm. by the state. So what does that look like to you when you're looking at, at the addition of minimum wage? I think you mentioned earlier that it's not just minimum wage there. It's your taxes. It's, there's so many different things. Well, the, the, the issue to me is, is that, you know, and I think with some of these other countries that you're bringing up too, I mean, I think the tax rates there are totally different in here too. And so, you, so to me, it's a, it's a philosophical difference. You have to make a trade, right? If you, if, you know, as, as a country, you have to say, look, you know, are we going to push individuals to the achieve their highest potential, or as a society, are we going to try to get at a societal greater potential? And I think that, you know, I, I, I think that you know, culturally here, we, we come from a place of it's always been people come here for opportunity. It's an individual opportunity, and so um, I do think that uh, the, the the push culturally is for individuals to to get the highest level of their own success. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I also think though that. Um, when you look at you know, businesses like mine where we're totally dictated by insurance uh, reimbursements and you look at then combined with health care reform and, the, and you know, my, my FTE worksheets that I have to do every month and you look at um, you know, the state and their budget issues and the, the, the government, you know, not, not only are they collecting record taxes, but they're still spending more than they're taking in. I mean, at what point are businesses going to get stretched at both ends, both in taxes and in wages, where suddenly how do you run a business? My rent keeps going up. My you know, utilities keep going up, you know, everything, you know, you have to dictate, you know, you have medical records that have to be electronic, everything is a cost. So, so there has to be a, the businesses have to feel like there's a point, small businesses especially have to feel like there's a point. It shouldn't take, I, I don't think it should take 15 years for a small business to finally feel like they've made it. Right. You know, I think that's too long. So there was a discussion by presidential candidate Ben Carson, um, and he was talking about a tiered system, which I thought was interesting. It kind of goes to your point. You know, if you're going to bring in an intern or you know, someone who's just trying to get their first job, um, what might like that, that look like? So what do you think perhaps about that tiered system? Do you think that that would be something that could could work and, and not have to be over managed? Yeah, I, I think there probably, probably would need to be something like that, uh, you know, to, to get it started and to have some sort of, um, for otherwise, you know, the, if, if it's just specific, if kids can get paid at a lower wage, then all the jobs are going to go to kids because the right. businesses are going to try and cut it. So I think there has to be some accounting for that. But I mean, as we're chatting, the, the one thing, like all of our costs do go up every year, but when's the last time the minimum wage even went up? Mm -hmm. I mean, every year costs are going up one, two, three. Like I know in our industry, even just footwear, our average footwear price is up $20 from what it was six, seven years ago for what we're selling. And um, the minimum wage hasn't changed, I don't think, since I, we opened almost 16 years ago, 
and maybe it's changed. State, the state minimum yeah. has changed. Yeah, federal. Right? Yeah. The, so and, and, it's just this yeah. something I, at a minimum. No there, pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> there, there needs to be some accounting for you know in, inflation in, in this whole thing. Even though inflation hasn't been great, you know, or high, right. I still think you know it, it's you, you, it costs more to buy a loaf of bread. I mean, right. gas is good right now, but I think we need to at least account for that. Okay. What do you think about a tiered system for something like well, your business? Well, if I look, if I take my business, I've got a tiered system. I've got high-paid professionals that don't worry about minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And then I've got the other end of the spectrum, high school kids that are, they like to see a minimum wage float because it means more money to them. And then you've got uh, the people in the middle that I have a lot of retirees that are coming out and they want to augment their salary. And granted, Naperville is not the rest of the country, but every time the minimum wage goes up, it bumps that, that retiree tier, if you will, up a little bit. And every time that tier goes up, I hire one less kid because for a buck or two more, I'd much rather hire an adult, somebody that's responsible, somebody that's not on their cell phone all the time. And I think that there is a, a there's a huge argument to go to a tiered system that benefits those kids. Because I, whatever the minimum wage, when I started working myself, I think the minimum wage was $1.65. But when I started managing it, I think it was four and a quarter. And to this day, I've not seen a single high school kid come in that's worth the minimum wage. <laughs> now, in two months, four months, they you want to give them a raise. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's where I have a problem with, if yeah. you raise it so high, there is no incentive for that kid. Because we used to have a system at the old store where we had, we had the front register, you learned that, you got minimum wage. You move to the back where you got to take care of photo finishing and Commonwealth Edison bills, and that's 50 cents more an hour or whatever it was. And if you set it at 15 bucks, there's no room for, that's it, you're going to get 15 bucks, and there's no incentive for that employee to perform any better, to take on any more work, and particularly with young kids, to teach them that incentive. Ron, I want so, you to hang on to your thought because we have to take a break, so hold on to that. And we will be right back discussing minimum wage. Lively discussion on minimum wage, um, Ron. I'd like to. to yeah, I, I just I, I I wanted to add that I'm I'm sympathetic to the notion that yes, we we need more jobs for youth for for people starting out in the labor market. We we, we this is a, a a serious problem. We have 50 percent unemployment among particularly black males, young, and teenage unemployment among all all races is very very high. Uh, and has been growing. So uh, the solution to that, though, is not to lower wages. It's to it's to it's to create jobs for kids. And we've had you know various times in history we've had you know job corps and all kinds of strategies to do that. Uh, I would also add that there is a tiered minimum wage in both the Illinois and the federal wage code. Uh, the federal wage is first 90 days you can pay 4.25, and the Illinois uh, you can pay 50 cents less to anyone under 18. In my experience, it's rarely used, actually. When I went and uh, surveyed fast food employers uh, in Indiana versus Illinois, the, the, uh, this is when Illinois raised its minimum wage, the, uh, the managers in Indiana were, were actually uh, envious of the managers in Illinois because they could get better workers. Mm -hmm. So the, the flip side of this is what you were saying, you know, higher wage, you can get a, a better, a more productive uh, employee. Uh, but then, of course, you, you, we need opportunity. We need jobs, and uh, we, we have the you know lowest employment to population ratio uh, that we've ever had. Uh, uh, that we're, we're not even up to where we were before the recession, I mean, right. at least predating the recession. So, so job creation is very important, and, and it does tie into a lot of broader issues. I agree. 
Uh, but, but again, the solution is not to keep wages low. It just that that I just cannot see that as a as a viable way to go. Do we see a direct correlation between something like um, crime versus versus pay, or is that more about jobs? Uh, no, absolutely. There are there are studies here. I mean, I you know we don't need to go into, <laughs> but but you know there, a twenty percent drop in wages leads to twelve to eighteen percent increase in youth crime. There there are various studies okay. that show that there is in fact yes there is a correlation between low wages. And, and crime, and, and, and of course, unemployment as well, right. lack of employment. Yeah. Well, obviously, we can look at our state and we go, you know, we're, our state isn't quite a state. Um, so when we talk about, you know, minimum wage, um, and, and Adam, as you alluded to earlier, you know, it's really so much more complex than that. I mean, I think one of the things that many businesses are being forced to do is become, you know, leaner um, and, and more savvy as, as, um, as they look to having, you know, heavier restrictions. So when, when you look at something like minimum wage, would it maybe become a question of hiring quality? versus you know the, the quantity but th that that's exa I think that's exactly the problem right because what's going to happen is y you're going to hire more quality people you're going to have less workers and that disparity is of, of the haves and have nots actually will I think will increase because businesses will say you know what our payroll budget is fixed so now maybe we have to get by with one or two less people than we did before so now you know so I think that there's that there's that dynamic of you know until that business makes more money or has more room to, to grow I think I think it's a real piece of businesses I mean look at the you know the the recession from 2008 I mean how many jobs were lost and and how many businesses figured out what to do with it and how many businesses really wanted to hire back because they said you know what? we don't need all these people right we don't need them and so I, and I think I think when you create that wage thing without the you know you look at you know you read the stuff about you know Chicago Public Schools and the mess that they're in right I mean you have an education gap mm -hmm. that's that's inherently going to affect the you know the quality right I mean everything kind of goes in in, in a line and, and and just by looking at a wage I think it's just too segment it's too focused on one on one piece and there's a whole overhaul that has to happen mm. with with, with skills training that, yeah. um, opportunity a whole a whole bunch of things it's not just paying people more and I, I'm not against like I said I'm not against the the, the notion that we ha you know you take people you know I think companies should have an ob do have an I think a moral obligation that's my perspective to take care of the people who work for them but but you don't have to and I think those companies who decide you know what, we're going to be in it for the bottom line. It's well within their bounds to do that. But then it's up to those employees to say, I don't really want to work here. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that there's an element of choice that we can't necessarily ignore either. Chris, what do you thought? Yeah, and the, it, it's kind of, to me, it gets to the, a little bit, I guess, to the moral obligation, which can be challenging to mm -hmm. talk about yeah. if you're stuck in a situation where you're, you're, you have a lot of fixed things that other people are controlling um, outside of you. And I could understand that being an issue. Uh, but I guess... For, for me, it just comes down to uh, a business philosophy. And mine's mm -hmm. probably changed since we first opened. Yeah. Um, and you know, at this point, I look at my business and say, I want this to be here uh, in perpetuity. And mm -hmm. for me to do that, I think I just have to have the perspective of who's ever part of this family needs to be treated properly. Mm -hmm. um, and I, <laughs> I just think they should be able to live in Naperville if they work for us. And maybe it's a little easier for me to say that in, in this type of business than others. but. Um, I just, I, I just really struggle with the idea that you can run, operate a business, and have a profit and do okay, and then have people that are working for you that really have to have a husband and a wife work 60, 70 hours a week to make make ends meet. That. So let me ask a question because this is what came up, and I'd be curious what your thoughts are. So I'm kind of seeing this as perhaps the 80/20 rule, meaning that 80% of the people understand that moral obligation. I want to make sure that I treat you know, my my employees like family and that they, they can take care of. But those 20% who are just, as you said, Adam, just focus on the bottom line, um, perhaps those are the ones that are making it difficult for those of us that we would take care of them. So that's that's kind of the annoying part is I would be willing to do my job, but now you're telling me I have to do my job. Well, I, I was going to actually uh, sort of make that, uh, make a point related to that, which is, that's that's why uh, a social decision is so important. Why the floor, the, the floor for everybody, universal, has to be lifted by fiat, by 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 government or somebody outside an outside force, because otherwise it's a race to the bottom. You know, the bad apples, the people that don't care, that just want to uh, exploit their workers, will drive the wages down, and then the other businesses won't be able to compete, and they'll have to lower their wages. So you just get the race to the bottom. You want to prevent that? You've got to. You've got to collectively, through social choice, 
push the floor up. But th th wouldn't that also, though, include bringing, like, you know, um, uh, you know, what, you know, you look at like smartphones, right? They're all made overseas. Wouldn't mm -hmm. that include bringing those jobs back here? Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know, and that and, that's, that, <laughs> and that, that and that to me is part of the issue. We talk about yep. you know this whole discussion. It's not just about the wage. Why don't we bring right. those jobs back here, create more jobs, right. put it all put all those extra to payroll tax dollars back right. into our economy? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, then and then give some of the, the small businesses here some more tax breaks. Now right. all of a sudden, you know what? This is actually right. a conversation that but, makes but some sense. But most of the minimum wage employers are fifty percent of fast food. I mean, mm -hmm. most of them are place bound. But I agree with you on trade. You know, the TPP, these free trade agreements mm -hmm. are killing us. And because it's the same thing, it's a race to the bottom. Mm -hmm. You want to avoid that. So you, you, you force global wages up uh, by, by putting that into those agreements, which they're not, it's not being done right now. So on that, you know, I agree. It, it is a broad issue. It has to be seen in a broad context. But the way to get at it is not to, <laughs> not to start with, you know, all the pieces have to, have to, have to work together. And, you can't have one falling through the bottom, and, and that's why, though I think, um, yeah. yes, just real quick. I mean, but that, that's why I think, you know, it's it's to me, it's a it's it's a segue, it's a tangential, but it's, it kind of goes with with health reform. You know, you take a segment and it makes sense, but you you leave out tort reform, you leave yeah. out, you know, these other these other facets. Um, you have United Healthcare with a seven hundred twenty million dollar loss now. It, it, you, you, when you only when you only tackle sixty five percent of a problem, you you can create more problems, and I think that's my anxiety with the with the um, you know the whole discussion about minimum. Wage. Yeah. It's, 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 it's too focused. Yeah, well, United Healthcare CEO makes millions and millions. Mm -hmm. of them. So, you know, and, and the overhead for, for, for public health care is much, much lower. So that's, that's a different thing. I know, it's, it's, well, it's, yeah. but it, it's, just, but, it's just the point of uh, it, it's, a, it's a great plan. It focused right. on 70% right. of the things, and I think that other 30. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as we have this discussion, yeah. we could probably go on for another half hour, but at this point, um, we have to wrap up. So, I want to thank you all so much for being here. Adam, Chris, Bill, Ron, thank you so much for your time, your insight. Um, it was really informative and a great discussion. So, I'd like to thank my guests today for such great conversation and discussion around minimum wage and for joining us today and inside the chamber. Uh, we hope that you have found this information valuable. As the president of the Naperville Area Chamber of Commerce, it's my job to provide you with quality content in 2016 designed to help your business flourish. So please join us for our next Inside the Chamber as we discuss the best kept secrets about marketing.